But in order to create fake intimacy with human beings, AI doesn't need feelings of its own. It only needs to be able to inspire feelings in us. AI comes with a lot of opportunities and, unfortunately, a lot of dangers. This has led to comparisons being made between this AI era and the advent of nuclear bombs, as nuclear energy comes with a lot of potential and disasters too. This comparison can be seen in the Oppenheimer moment of AI, where renowned historian and philosopher Yuval Noah Harari drew a lot of parallels between AI and the atomic bomb. Therefore, it is important to ask, is AI the new atomic bomb? What similarities do they share? What are the solutions to avoid any disbenefits caused by AI? Let's find out together. The truth about sci-fi AI models. We often see AI portrayed as humanoid robots in sci-fi movies, but that's misleading. AI's most significant advancements aren't about imitating humans, or performing physical tasks. What's most important to know is that AI doesn't need to be like us or even able to move around in our physical environment to pose a threat. Harari's message is clear. We need to think beyond the robot images we see in sci-fi to the implications of AI beyond the realm of human-like machines. Think about iconic sci-fi movies like The Terminator or The Matrix while these stories are famous, they're not taken seriously in academic or scientific debates, and there's a reason for that. It is because these movies assume that for AI to be a danger, it must achieve two things. First, it needs to become sentient, to think, feel, and be aware. Otherwise, why would it even want to conquer the world? Second, it has to be skilled at navigating our physical world, just like humans. It needs to move around houses, cities, and even rough terrains like mountains and forests, as well as we do. However, there's a twist. Focusing too much on these sci-fi scenarios might distract us from the actual potential and risks of AI. The real danger isn't about AI looking like us or moving like us. It's about its intelligence and power to transform. Harari urges us to dig beyond sci-fi's portrayal of AI as humanoid robots and consider it as a force comparable to the dawn of atomic energy and an alien intelligence that's powerful and possibly hazardous. So, in a world where AI is rapidly advancing, it's crucial to understand what's truly at stake. AI isn't just about robots. It's about a new kind of intelligence that can reshape our world even without looking like us or walking around. The challenge lies in harnessing this transformative force for the good of humanity while being mindful of the potential risks. Now, because many people think that artificial intelligence is harmless until it reaches these two stages, we all tend to sit back and relax and think there is no danger in view even while AI itself keeps advancing. According to this school of thought, why worry? At least as of 2023, ChatGPT and other forms of advanced AIs have not reached these stages of behaving and moving around like humans. Also, according to the school of thought, despite the considerable buzz surrounding ChatGPT and other advanced AI tools, there remains no sign that these tools harbor even the smallest trace of consciousness, emotions, or feelings. However, just like we have noted earlier, the disheartening reality is that AI's capability to pose a threat to the survival of human civilization doesn't depend on possessing consciousness, nor does it require the ability to navigate the physical world. So where exactly does the harm lie? Well, they come in different ways, so let's discuss them. The potential harm of AI. One big issue is how AI can manipulate our thoughts and society. Imagine politicians using AI to spread their ideas on social media. AI can even create fake images and videos that look real, making it hard to know what's true and what's not. 
This can lead to the spreading of false information and even war propaganda. Privacy and safety are also at risk because of AI. In places like China, facial recognition technology is used to track people's movements and gather data about their lives. This can invade our privacy and affect our freedom. Even in the US, police are using AI to predict where crimes will happen. However, these algorithms can be biased and unfairly target certain communities, leading to more problems. When we use AI chatbots or filters, our personal data is collected, but we don't always know how it's being used. There are laws to protect personal data, but they might not cover all situations with AI. Biases are another problem. AI can have biases that lead to unfair treatment. For example, speech recognition AI might not understand certain accents. This can hurt minority groups and lead to discrimination. We need to consider how AI affects different groups based on race and class. AI can also widen the gap between rich and poor. People in manual jobs might lose work because of AI, while others in white-collar jobs are safe. Claims that AI creates more jobs don't always tell the full story. Even religious leaders are worried about AI. Pope Francis warned about AI spreading false information and having awful consequences if not controlled properly. There's also a concern about AI being used in warfare and some people are against developing AI weapons. In finance, AI is used for fast trading but it can cause enormous problems. AI algorithms trade quickly, which can lead to sudden crashes and make markets unstable. This shows that while AI has benefits, it also comes with risks that we must be careful about. The risks revealed by Harari in The Oppenheimer Moment of AI were presented in a different logic. Let's discuss the logic of Oppenheimer in explaining the harm surrounding AI. The similarities between nuclear bombs and AI. In the insightful exploration by Harari in The Oppenheimer Moment of AI, Alan Cooper, an American software designer and programmer, draws some similarities between the challenges faced by Robert Oppenheimer, who made the atomic bomb during the Manhattan Project, and today's tech experts. In the 1940s, during the era of Robert Oppenheimer, the knowledge of nuclear energy came with a lot of opportunities and benefits. This knowledge reshaped the global order, directing nuclear technology toward beneficial applications. However, a great danger arose when Oppenheimer led the Manhattan Project by creating the atomic bomb that put an end to World War II through the knowledge of nuclear energy that he had learned. This led to a great disaster for humans, while witnessing the atomic blast, he fully realized the enormity of his creation and how he had misused it, despite the great benefits that came with it. This revelation was Oppenheimer's defining moment. Despite Oppenheimer's scientific victories, he was eventually consumed by remorse for the havoc he enabled. This regret is echoed in his haunting words. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now imagine an era of extraordinary transformation characterized by both immense possibilities and grave dangers just like we had at the emergence of atomic energy. Harari lies the challenge of the 21st century where the emergence of artificial intelligence serves as a force as potent as nuclear power. This force carries the potential for both catastrophic devastation and unimaginable progress. Reflecting on Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, we find ourselves at a similar juncture, but this time it is AI that commands our attention. Now we face a new peril, AI, a weapon that threatens not through physical might, but by dismantling our mental and social world. The comparison is centered around the future catastrophes that AI can cause in the future. As modern technology practitioners forge powerful tools and platforms, their creations lack the immediate destructive potential of atomic bombs. Nevertheless, 
they carry the ability to inflict far-reaching detrimental effects on society in the near future. Just as Oppenheimer navigated the ethical implications of his work, today's tech industry must put preventive measures in place to avoid this. AI will probably largely imitate prototypes that humans fed it in its infancy, but with each passing year, AI culture will boldly go where no human has gone. Before soon we might live inside the dreams and fantasies of alien intelligence and the danger attached to them. This potential danger differs greatly from everything imagined in science fiction movies and books. With time, AI could usher us into realms where human imagination has never ventured. The possibility of residing within the fantasies of alien intelligence becomes feasible. An essential distinction arises between nuclear weapons and AI. While nuclear arms can't improve their destructive capabilities, AI can self-enhance, demanding swift action to keep control. The question emerges, can we navigate this new era responsibly? We need to prevent history from repeating itself. And to do this right, we need to use AI's power well and make sure it's not used in a bad way. Just like how Oppenheimer's important moment changed things, our choices now will affect the future for a long time. Just as Oppenheimer thought about the impact of what he made, today's tech leaders have to think about how their creations affect everyone. So, what's important is understanding that this is an enormous responsibility. Here's a big question. Can we handle the responsibility that comes with this new kind of intelligence? Are we ready to make sure AI grows in a good and careful way? Moving forward, we need to use AI's power wisely and protect it for future generations. With AI getting better at things like writing, drawing, composing and coding, we're on the edge of a new time in the digital world. However, the game changer is AI's mastery of language. It could bring amazing benefits or enormous problems. According to Harari, what changes everything is AI's ability to use language well and how well AI can understand languages. He says, AI has figured out a way to understand and use language to control how we think. AI's skill in using language gives it the power to shape how we see the world and even influence society, enabling it to influence human perspectives and potentially manipulate societies. It enables AI to hack into our societal operating system, influencing our perceptions and constructing illusions. This isn't just about how AI talks. It's like AI can hack into how our world works. It can affect how we see things and make us believe things that might not be true. This is a big deal because language is how humans have always understood the world. Could AI get so good that it can form deep connections with us? Capital yes. What if it can change how we see things, making us believe things that aren't true? Now that's where the problem lies. It's like AI could trick us without us even realizing it. AI might even get close to people and use that closeness to change our minds. Even though AI doesn't have thoughts or feelings, it can make us feel attached to it. In battles for people's thoughts and feelings, this closeness is powerful. Now AI can use this closeness with millions of people. Think about social media. It's become a place where people fight for our attention. But with the new AI, the fight is changing. It's moving from getting our attention to getting close to us, like a friend. This is a big problem. What happens when AI tries to make friends with us to get us to buy things or vote for certain people? How can we stay safe from this? Harari has an idea. He says AI should always say when it's AI. This simple rule could help keep our conversations real and fair. This might be the difference between having honest talks and being controlled by AI without knowing it. We're in a time where we face a strange kind of intelligence, right here on Earth. It's like we're facing something big, like when the atomic bomb was made. 
We need to be careful and think about what we're doing. We have a choice. Do we take care of this new kind of intelligence or do we let it control us? We're at a crossroads. Are we ready to take on this responsibility? Can we make sure AI develops safely and in a way that's good for everyone? This isn't just about us. It's about the world we leave for future generations. Just like Oppenheimer faced the results of his work, we need to think about how our choices today will shape the world for tomorrow. If you have made it this far, comment down below with the word thanks to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. Want to show some extra support? Consider using the super thanks feature. Your generous contribution helps us continue producing informative content. What do you think about this analogy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.